Okay, before we get started today, you might be saying, why install Snow Leopard on a PC? Well, there are several reasons. One, PCs are much cheaper. Also, if you have an old PC, Leopard or Linux will run much faster on it than Windows. So it's kind of a way of recycling your older hardware. Two, you can triple boot. Today we're going to configure Snow Leopard, Linux, Ubuntu, and Windows 7 on each PC. Three, you will learn many, many things about the Mac operating system, in this case Snow Leopard, through your excessive tinkering. Today we're going to create three different Hackintoshes. The first two will be actual hardware PCs. One is a five-year-old EverX notebook, and the other is an Intel i3 laptop. The last one will be a VMware virtual machine running over Windows 7 on the i3. Basically, for our intents and purposes, a Hackintosh is a hardware PC running Apple's Snow Leopard. It may also be a VMware virtual machine running on a PC. For excellent guides, advice, and instructions, be sure to check out the kind folks at Hackintosh.com if you want to try this on one of your PCs. So we're going to do on um, Hackintoshes, and we're going to do three different ones. So one is on this Toshiba here, which is an i3. Fairly modern, but you know, inexpensive computer. You can get these for less than $500 on PC. So that's our, sort of our modern one. This is an old one. It's about four, almost five years old. And uh, this is basically just a, a cheap netbook. Not very powerful. And as you can see, I'm holding the battery in by duct tape. <laughs> so, but we're going to install Snow Leopard on these machines and we'll make them Hackintoshes. And we're going to do a triple boot. So, sorry, I have to hold the camera here. Alright, so I'm going to open them up. And I'm going to power them on. And each triple boot, um, booting a Windows 7, Ubuntu, and Snow Leopard. Alright. Now you can see here, so I'm just going to kind of zoom in on the menu there. Maybe that, I don't know if that will be legible or, it's not a very good camera. Alright, so you can see my menu there. I'm just using Grub2. And um, there's Ubuntu 1010, there's Snow Leopard, the 32 bit version, and there's Windows 7. I'm going to go ahead and boot Leopard. We'll boot into Leopard here. This sort of be our first one. And just go to the website hackintosh.com if you get a copy of um, Snow Leopard. And Alright, and then here you can um, kind of bring the mouse pointer there. So there's just the menu. And, um, I wonder if I can film and put this on my lap. Let me try that. Gosh, I really got to get a tripod or somebody to hold a camera. Eh? Alright, but um, everything works. Um, you know, decent graphics. Um, you know, the sound works. Um, the only thing that I had issues with was the network card. And so to solve that, well, first off, let me just... You, know, you may have to kind of tinker a little bit with different KEX files, drivers and sound and all. I added an NTFS 3G Fuse kernel driver so I could, you know, load um, NTFS partitions from on my Windows 7 machine. Okay. And I like VLC player, you know, media player. And Linux, Windows, and Mac, it just plays a lot of a lot of different formats. You can see that, you know, there's no no performance lag there. Really meaningless. No! A trade's power must never be marginalized by the chaos of the mass. Full screen even. 
you know, I don't think it runs any less, uh, I mean, for an old netbook, it runs as good as a, <laughs> well, a new Mac, just about, so, I think, neat way to recycle old hardware. Seems like Snow Leopard's a lot more forgiving with the hardware, or it's able to use, it's able to use the memory and the CPU cycles more efficiently than Windows 7. Windows 7 runs like a dog on this thing. It's only got 2 gigs of RAM and it's like a 1.6 gigahertz processor. Um, Linux runs pretty nice on it and Snow Leopard runs really nice on it. Now one of the things, one of the problems I had was, the only thing I, I tweaked and tweaked and tweaked and I almost, you know, got the built-in network card right here, the little transceiver to work. but. I just had too many issues that kept conking out. So I, I had one of these old USB Netgear adapters and there's a factory made Macintosh driver that goes with it. How cool is that? So basically I just used that. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. So I'll just plug it into a USB port. And presto, there's my wireless. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this application here. Um, alright, and I'll try to zoom in, but you can see my signal strength, I guess, there, and there's my access point. I hope you can see that. Again, you know, I don't have a really good camera here. It doesn't even have a focus on it. One of these days, it's on my list to get a great camera, but it's just not a priority right now. I'm trying to do this with one hand here. Navigate a touchpad. Another cool thing about a Hackintosh is I have a right click. And you guys with power books don't have that. But you can see, you know, I got IP address now, at least it. I'm using 256-bit encryption. And let's just hop on, let's use Safari. We'll load up Safari here and go. Again, I'm trying to hold this camera and focus and use a touchpad and tilt the laptop and... Oh. There, I have it on my knee now. Okay. So you can see I've got Safari open now. Let's go to YouTube. We'll put do some flash. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away, Nabu was under an attack. And I thought Try some full screen here. Again, you know, this is really old hardware. I don't know if you can see it's, some, you know, basically a bottom line, generic RX. You know, it's not real sophisticated. It's, it's kind of the cheapest hardware you can get, and yet it's running Snow Leopard, and uh, it's man, I think it's running great. A heck of a lot faster than with Windows 7. I have Windows 7 on there anyway, because there's some things I need Windows 7 for, but it's a nice way to recycle an old laptop. So just go to hackintosh.com and, you know, like I said, you need to be willing to tinker because if you're going to put Leopard on a PC, well, you know, Apple doesn't make drivers for PCs. They make drivers for their hardware. They're not open architecture. Um, but if you're willing to tinker and you're willing to put some time into it, you can kind of make Leopard install on your PC. And even do a triple boot. You know, have uh, Linux, Ubuntu, and um, Snow Leopard, and Windows 7. If you can't make up your mind like me, what operating system you want to use, and you can have your choice of, you know, three or four whenever you need them. Maverick, Meerkat runs pretty puppy here. And I'm, um, you know, running it with effects. Let me see if I can hold down both of these here. And there's, you know, I'm running even the barrel desktop manager. And there's no real serious performance lag there, even though this is an old beat up piece of hardware. Ubuntu wise, oh, Linux. I'm telling you, Linux does great with legacy hardware. It's just not as demanding. It, it does more with less, I think, in my humble opinion. Um, but you know, just standard, standard fare there. Um, 
Might as well go look at a flash video real quick too. We'll just kind of try to gauge the performance or the, the general clunkiness. Let's look at um different you know, we'll try to look at different operating systems and see what's um I'm I'm using a lot of 3D effects here as you can tell. So there's that and it's the Compass 3D desktop with the cube and boy it's really hard to press both mouse buttons with the hold on hold on both mouse buttons and do the cube right there so you see I'm doing that on this old legacy Everex notebook and that's a you know, the new flash when you go to full screen has to rebuffer so it's not really the hardware but it's network access you can see that you know Ubuntu and um, Snow Leopard compare about the same they both run really fast and really efficiently with older legacy hardware and although the Snow Leopard required a lot of tinkering and a lot of tweaking Ubuntu was, I thought it was easier, an easier install than Windows 7 everything was just built right in And um, this is the Windows 7 partition here. We'll, you know, so we've done Snow Leopard, we did Ubuntu. You know, um, just to show that you can use. I mean, I was using Grub too, but you can also configure um, the BCD store in Windows 7 to load Linux and Mac and, and different operating systems. I, I did both there, so they kind of loop back and forth. But I guess that was kind of pointless, but just to show that you could use either one to configure your multi-boot menu. But of all the operating systems, the third one, Windows 7, is, is the, is the you know, most sluggish with this older you know, legacy hardware. Alright, we looked at booting up, uh, you know, configuring a triple boot setup with uh, the Grub2 bootloader and Linux and the BCD store database and, and the Windows 7 bootloader. Now I'm going to look at Chameleon, which is an Apple bootloader, and again, we're, I'm on an inexpensive Toshiba laptop. This is the economy model, less than 500 bucks. But the neat thing is, although it's you know, kind of cheaply built and not as nice looking on the outside as an Apple on the inside, um, it's got a 500 gig hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM, it's an i3 processor, so uh, you couldn't touch internal hardware like that on a Macintosh, even if you paid $2,000. So, although it doesn't look as nice on the outside, um, you know, it's, um, let me go ahead and boot Snow Leopard here, it's the Chameleon bootloader. Um, this looks as nice on the outside, but, I mean, you know, you think about it, you're getting a lot more on the inside for, you know, one-fourth the price when you use a PC. Alright, and it's booting up here. These are just some of the kex files and things I had, but and I pretty much have all the drivers set up. Graphics is really smooth. Um, sound works nice. This thing has nice loud speakers too. There's Harman Kardon. Just playing this in iTunes now, but love that song Fireflies. Just can't get enough. Let me just do a couple of media files. Here's my son rapping. Hey, Wait, go. Hey, y'all. And here's my daughter dancing. What's your favorite dance? Are you a ballerina? 